Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wowza is actually bringing to you a new series called Diary of a Double. And this will be the journey as told uh, by Antonio Aguelas of Mexico City about his journey to be the oldest person to complete a two-way crossing of the English Channel. That's 67 kilometers from England to France and then France back to England. And over this last year, unfortunately, um, like many of us, Antonio could not train or trained very little because of the global pandemic. But he is starting anew and we'll follow up with Antonio on a regular basis on how he's training physically, mentally, uh, nutritionally, and some of the logistical issues that he's going to face. Uh, welcome, Antonio. Thanks, Stephen. It's a yeah. pleasure to be here with you, as you say, wherever we are in the world, morning, afternoon, or evening. And uh, as always, it's a great pleasure talking to you. Yeah. And you're going to be 62 next year, next summer. Um, and what is your big plan? Can you explain that double crossing of the English Channel? Yes, I'll be 62 and with one granddaughter, which is always okay. important. I want to yeah. be. I, I want to be now the grandfather open waters for me. Great, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, Stephen. After I finished Ocean Seven, um, it was like, you know, the big question to me was always, what's next? And yes. as you know, and people who are following us through WOSA in our interviews, I wrote the book, um, The Endless Swim. And I've been giving a lot of t talks, but I, I have an unfinished business. And um, long, you know, about when, when I first swam the English Channel 21 years ago, I wanted to do a double. Oh. And I trained for that. If I hadn't trained for that, I would, have been, I would have been able to finish because it took me 18 hours and 19 minutes in my first English Channel. So there was something that I always wanted to achieve. And I never had, um, I, I obviously had the time, but I wasn't in my, in my, in my, um, you know, in my path. So now that I finished Ocean 7, I, I set a goal to do that. And as you can imagine, it's a, it's a complicated task. I mean, trying to yeah. do English Channel back and forth is not something that uh, comes easy. So I took a year off after I did Ocean 7. And then, then I started training for two years. And um, that's when I did, uh, last year I did Catalina back and forth. And yeah. for me, Catalina was my, my training and to be sure that I was able to, uh, you know, that I would be physically and mentally uh, ready to try to do the English Channel. And I had a date this year um, at the end of August. But as you said, with the pandemic um, and confinement, I, that just not, not, not happened. So it was very frustrating, as you said, like for many of us swimmers, that we didn't have a goal. The only thing that, that I can complain too much is because all the Olympic athletes didn't go to Tokyo. So I can't <laughs> complain because I couldn't go to England. And um, so I decided to take two weeks off, two weeks ago. Um, I talked to Rafa, who is now my coach, Rafa Alvarez. And we said we needed to you know, clear our minds. And having been in the pool for two weeks, uh, just enjoying running again, uh, biking, walking. And on Monday, I will start my, my path, my journey to try to do a double um, next year. And um, so that's, that's my goal. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to train consistently in the next uh, months to, to come. And uh, hopefully, next summer, um, the world will be more settled and uh, people will travel freely because, as you know, England has been closing its borders. I mean, it just recently closed with the French a couple of weeks ago with the Spanish. So um, that's, that's what I have right now in mind. Yes. And about this closing of borders, I mean, this is actually quite good because it, it's unexpected. Just like when you swam the English Channel the first time and when you're going to swim or complete your double next year, you're going to hit unexpected things. You train and train and train, you prepare, you plan, and all of a sudden something happens. And how do you mentally prepare for, for these 
unexpected things that always happen to a channel swimmer? Well, I guess the first thing is to know that they're gonna happen. Because you know, usually people don't think that things are gonna happen. So yeah. you have to come in, in into the ocean. And as you know, I have a lot of respect for the ocean. And I never go in thinking that things are gonna go the way we planned it. So I, I um, besides my swimming, I have a, a, a training coach. His name is uh, Jaime Delgado. And we meet once or twice a week. And I have a routine now that I do every day for about half an hour, 45 minutes, where I, um, one of the things that we do for the unexpected is that um, we try to think all the different problems that we're gonna face and see how mentally I can scrap them from my, my, my mind. For example, when we're doing um, the North Channel, one of the things that I want to get off my mind was the, the pain of the cold water um, that would come into my, ar my arms and my hands and my feet. And that we worked that a lot. Um, when we were training for the double, we decided to um, think about f four legs, England to the middle, middle to France, then France to the middle, and then from the middle till the end. And imagining what would be happening in each one of those quarters. And when we did Catalina, that was very helpful because on the way back, um, we missed the, the rotation of, the, of the, the kayakers. And my watch just went, uh, you know, went off. And um, for a while, I was very disor disoriented in terms of time. Um, and that, you know, that can happen. I mean, and I had a great crew, Dan Simonelli with, with me. And, but nobody told me that the, 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 uh, the rotation had changed from four hours to three hours. Oh. So when I finished Catalina, I was sure I was three hours later than I really did. <laughs> so I thought I had finished in 27 hours. And when I found out it was 24 hours, you know, I was totally in, in ecstasy because it was almost a negative split. So you have to prepare mentally. And, and that's one big part of my training is to, to, to train mentally for the unexpected. And, um, and what are the things that I expect in England? Number one, it's going to be cold. I mean, it's not going to be Catalina. It's not going to be 22 degrees Celsius like, like I did in Catalina last year. And then you have all the unexpected things that can happen, the wind, the waves, uh, how, the, you know, how hard it's going to change the, the, you know, the, um, the tides. Um, so you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And... Um people who don't know you or people who know you as a, as a channel swimmer, as a marathon swimmer, many of them don't know of your career as a, as a triathlete and, and a marathon runner and, and all these land-based activities. And you and I both know that a, a triathlete, they, they tend to be at least the most competitive ones, very slender. They, they take care not to eat too much. And um, marathon swimmers and channel swimmers don't have that need to uh, be so disciplined with their food and drink. And well, that's, one of very, the things, <laughs> that's very good. That's very good. You know, that's yeah. why I, I, that's what I stopped triathlon, I guess, I guess, because, yeah. you know, you, I, you, when, you remember triathlon just started 30 years ago. And when you see the triathlons, my, you know, our age group, they look like, you know, that the only thing they do is do triathlon. I mean, they, they're so fit and, and thin and, 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 no, I couldn't do that. I, I, I always say that I keep on swimming the way I do because I like to drink and I like to eat. Great. So uh, that's that, that one of the things that our followers are going to learn in the next month and year is that um, I'm not very disciplined with that. I discipline in my way. I, 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 I love drinking red wine. I love drinking Corona and Herradura Blanco and, uh, and eating anything that's uh, it's in my plate. You know, we have eaten several times and you see how I eat. I mean, I, I, I don't count calories, that, I, that's for sure. I don't count calories. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want people to understand that as you're going along this journey, you're enjoying life. You, you gather with your family and friends and, and, and you, you, you don't have to say no to food. You welcome it. You enjoy it with a good bottle of wine or some tequila. I mean, this is what we want people to know. You train hard but you also enjoy the life that you lead. Yeah, 
yeah, as I mentioned in the book and in my talks, one thing that I that I promised myself after uh, before I started swimming Sugaru on Ocean Seven is that the most important thing for me was not to get to the other side of the swim. It was enjoying the journey. Uh, and this is something that I tell people: enjoy the journey. I mean, yeah. so many times we're fixed with the end game that we don't enjoy the journey. And yeah. um, and one thing that I've done through my life is is have this philosophy that. I would never be able to change the past. The past is there, and I'm not ever going to change it. The future, I cannot predict it. I cannot, I cannot have a grip of the future. The only thing that I can do is enjoy my life on a daily basis. Because yeah. you never know what's going to happen on the day. You just think about what's happening to with the confinement. Yeah. None of us knew in January that we we're going to be in the situation we are right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. somebody was told us that the Olympics would not be going on in, in, in during the summer. We have said it's crazy. And that's what happened. I mean, we only can live day by day. Yeah. And in, in your case, actually, you could have not been here. You had high blood pressure. And part of your, your, your ability to still be here is, isn't it related to exercise and how you've lived your life to now? Yes. You know, I, when I was 48, just before I started training for my attempt to do the Triple Crown in one year, um, I went and had a, um, a physical. And the doctors found out that my blood pressure was 165 over 96. Mm. That's really bad, really bad. And so I went to my cardiologist, Hermes Filarraza, and I asked him, just tell me, I've been do exercising since I was nine years old. I said, yes, that's because that's the reason it didn't show up until you were 48. If it didn't happen, you probably would have been dead between 30 and 35. So, and this is one thing that, that it's important for, 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 for our friends that will be following is that you can have high blood pressure and it doesn't matter if you take care in terms of your meds. If you're very, you know, you're taking them every day. Um, I get a checkup before I start training, and I will I will share the results with uh, with uh, with everybody. Um, I don't, you know, the only thing that I don't like, you know, what is that I get on the treadmill, and uh, I don't I don't run I don't run as good as I did before. So the treadmill I, I cannot achieve as far as I want to go. But um, um, I've talked to Rafa, and we're going to be doing some uh, tests in the water. Um, to, to, to find out where I am. And we obviously will do the treadmill uh, also. But um, one of the things that's important before you start a season is that you have a medical checkup. I mean, that's very important. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna follow you over this next year. Every week, every day, you'll, you'll share your workouts, you'll share your successes, you'll share the times where perhaps you can't get to your training area. Uh, perhaps, um, you know, you can't get to La Jolla or, or aquatic uh, park in, in San Francisco. We want to know exactly how you actually enjoy and achieve this, this journey. Yes, uh, Stephen, I'm very happy that, um, that you and I are going to be working on this project. Um, what I, what my, my, my commitment with, uh, for, uh, with you and the community is that I, have, I will not keep any secrets. I want, I want everybody to know how somebody like me trains um, and I will share everything. Um, you will see that some days I'm just really tired. And, and this is something that, that, that I've seen in some of the, the, my, 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 my friends who are swimmers, that they, they get their workouts for the week and they wanna do everything. And sometimes you're so tired that the best thing is to rest one or two days. Or just yeah. go to the pool and forget about the times and just enjoy a slow swim for an hour and that'll be enough. And um, my, my weight, my, um, my, it's not, it's um, strength training. The strength has been a very important part for me now that I've become older. And the other thing that, that I hate, but I love is trying to perfect my stroke. Yeah. Um, because I know that it's gonna take me at least 40 hours, 24 hours. To, yeah. to do the channel. I mean, maybe more, maybe 25, 30. You never know with the channel. Um, and that I need to be 
as efficient as I can uh, to um, be able to hold my pace for such a long time. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting and really educational, and I think really fun, because actually in your mind, as you see yourself, you see yourself as a pirate, right? Yeah, <laughs> let me show you. Never here. I will have my sword for any anything that I need. I always have my sword next to my desk. Here's my sword. Anybody that comes into my library knows that I have my sword in hand. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be a joy to follow you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steven.